Bank meeting. of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem talking about how the economy is doing and will inflation get better for Canadians who are really feeling the price pinch and just about everything. One of the big questions was, when can borrowers expect a break on interest rates? So let's bring in Jeannie Lee on this question. Jeannie, what did you hear about that? Well, we heard uh, Tiff Macklem, the uh, Bank of Canada governor, stick to his message, Hannah, and that is we are not there yet when it comes to even thinking about lowering interest rates. So he said that several times, and reporters tried to get it out of him in different ways, but he stuck to his message. So have a listen to one of those instances. If we don't do enough... Canadians will have to continue to live with inflation that's too high, too variable. Uh, and ultimately, we're probably going to have to raise rates even further to get it down. So we don't want to make that mistake. On the other hand, yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to overdo it. So still talking about interest rate hikes, uh, possibly more to come, even though uh, his counterpart in the U.S., uh, Jerome Powell of the U.S. Uh, Central Bank, the U.S. Fed, said 48 hours ago that not only was the Fed thinking about uh, or talking about rate cuts, but also that the projections by the different members have uh, three interest rate uh, drops in the next year. So uh, that's uh, that's being discussed very openly in the U.S. But Macklem is sticking to his very cautious approach, not talking about uh, lowering rates, just reviewing uh, today what has happened in the last year. So some of the points he made uh, in his year in review, a news conference, shall we say, is that this second year of rate hikes um, is paying off because uh, inflation has now been wrestled down to 3.1 percent, that rate, the overall rate, although the economy is stalling, which is another side effect of uh, rate hikes. The target inflation rate is still 2 percent, as it has been since 1995, and he's sticking with that because just because you haven't hit the target doesn't mean you change the target, was the quote. Now, again, he said it is still too early to consider cutting our policy rate, which would then and be the benchmark for other interest rates that consumers would pay, for example. But uh, there is a case for rate hikes soon. And here, uh, I'll, I'll tell you some of those points. Number one, if you have the U.S. lowering rates, as uh, it's thinking of doing, that would push up the uh, loonie, because it would drop the U.S. dollar. The loonie would go up in relative to that, and that would hurt our exporters. So that's an argument. Um, the U.S. economy has been resilient, it's growing still pretty steadily, uh, and yet the U.S. is already prepared to lower interest rates. Um, so uh, it would be raise a question as to why Canada is hesitant when Canada's economy has actually completely stalled. The other thing is there is a risk of keeping rates too high too long because uh, then you might have an even weaker economy. At, from where we are now, which is stalled growth. So those are the arguments, and that's why um, we're talking about um, the markets uh, that do their own thing in terms of uh, predicting where rates will be, and the markets are calling for a rate cut, lower rates in April, if uh, not a few months after that. Okay, thank you, Jeannie, I always appreciate it. All right. So we've heard from the Bank of Canada governor on the year that was and a little bit about the year ahead. So let's peer a bit deeper into 2024's economic crystal ball. And the best person to do this is Armin Yelnizyan. She is an economist at the Atkinson Fellow and an Atkinson Fellow at the Future on the Future of Workers. Welcome back to the program. I know you were listening in to both the governor as well as Jeannie there. We've heard about... Uh, you know, these punishing rates that the hikes have caused over the past couple of years, it's had a huge impact on Canadians. I'm going to ask you, you heard from Jeannie there, if you were to look into your crystal ball for 2024, can Canadians expect a little easing on that? Gosh, I wish I was wearing a turban, you know, because it does feel like that kind of a cucamonga moment. The uncertainty is remarkable. And the Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklin pointed to it, but it's certainly something everybody's talking about, what 2024 will look Mm -hmm. like. 
For me, the number one thing to be looking at is what's happening to labor shortages. And what will that mean to people losing jobs or being able to find jobs when they lose jobs? And what will that mean in terms of wage growth being able to catch up to the remarkable price hikes? Because if rates don't come down, um, even if they do, a lot of mortgages are going to be renewed in 2024. And the price of housing will go up for a very large number of Canadian households. So if uh, jobs are getting harder to find, or if they're remaining tight and easy to find, uh, will make a huge difference in 2024. And I think 2024 will be the year of the tell. Is this a generational, even half century shift into a different form of bargaining power where workers actually have got more on the go than they have had for 50 years in terms of what they can look for in the job market. That's what demographics delivers, but will central banks take away what demographics delivers? Yeah, and that's a lot of question for people when it comes to wages. Will they have the jobs that, you know, will the jobs be available? And will they, if they have a job now, get wage increases that reflect um, the increase in prices in just about everything? Just about everything, but most importantly, housing. Yeah. Because that is the other shoe to fall still. The whole impact of what the central bank has done in both Canada and the US and any country that raised rates to deal with inflation, which by the way, the, the jury is out as to that, that's the reason why inflation came down. And you know whether just continuing to raise rates or diddle around with how high or low they go is going to get us to the 2% target. There are many other things that are happening including the story that interrupted what you were listening to before, what's happening in the Middle East, right. plus what's happening in China, plus what's happening in South America, particularly in Argentina right now. You know, like The list goes on and on about geopolitical problems that might lead inflation to tick up again, at which point, what are they going to do? Raise interest rates again when that has nothing to do with the price of fuel and has nothing to do with the price of food. So we've got a really difficult moment. 2024 is going to be multiple tests of our patience. Uh, the Bank of Canada governor mentioned how important it was to earn the trust of Canadians, but they've got one tool to deal with the situation, which is raise or lower the interest rate. Whereas the problems we are facing are coming from, at us from every direction right now. Yeah, let's put that geopolitical in perspective because we are partly where we are right now because of the pandemic, because of pandemic spending, also because of the war in Ukraine, all of those things. So you never know what could happen in 2024 that could just change things like that. A hundred percent. We are wading into a type of uncertainty when it comes to, for example, more frequent and extreme episodes of climate chaos. Uh, which we saw in 2023 more than in 2022. I don't think anything has turned back the dial. In 2024, we could, at COPs, we couldn't even get, at COP28, we couldn't even get the major leaders to say, actually, maybe we shouldn't be pulling more fossil fuels out of the ground. So, like, we are heading into a, you know, a polycrisis. And how our governments deal with it, as well as our central banks, are incredibly important. But the central banks have done their thing now. Everybody's, like, pricing in a climb down of rates, but we are at higher levels than we were, you know, two years ago. And those mortgage, mortgage rates have not been fully renewed yet yeah. to deal with the higher rates. And that will cascade into the rental market. And if wages don't keep up, we are dealing with a major, major problem down the road. So many things to think about, but let me give you right? one more. Yeah, I know it's stressful. Let me give you one more <laughs> thing to think about. And for Canadians too, that looming R word, do you think there will be any form of recession next year? Hard to tell, but the distinction between the R word and where we're at, which is sloth, no, yeah. or extremely slow growth is hard to uh, square. What we are talking about is an incredibly resilient economy, you know, and we should be very happy about that. But the big punishing moment for especially younger workers is that they can't afford to live where they work. So mm -hmm. this overhang question uh, at a time when we really are looking at, um, we haven't seen this tightness in the labor market for 50 years. 
And it's not likely to go away right away because we haven't finished the exit of the boomers from the labor market and we just don't have enough kids to replace them. So that means more immigrants. We need them or the economy will shrink, guaranteed, because we have no productivity to offset uh, the story. Um, and if that happens, then we continue to put pressure on housing. So you see, you, you push in the bubble one place to yeah. deal with labor shortages and you create a housing problem. On the other side, you push in the housing problem by reducing the number of people coming in and you create another set of problems with economic slowdown. So no easy choices going forward. Wouldn't want to be in the driver's seat. I'm putting on my <laughs> turban and I'm going to the bathroom. Okay, Armin, uh, appreciate this conversation. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me, Hannah. Armin Yelnizna Yen is an economist and Atkinson Fellow on the Future of Workers.